So we're going to delve into that, spiritual realities and yes. how consciousness is pegged to that. Yes. Now, alternate, uh, alternate mind yes, uh, therapy. therapy. Yes. What, what does that mean? Alternative mind therapy means, like, uh, you know, there are conventional ways of looking at mental health. Conventional ways of looking at mental health means you can go through a psychology who will start human behavior and understand why those things you are going through, why they happen like that. But alternative mind therapy means I am going to explain to you the genesis of your problems from the root that is spirit, making you understand that you are both spiritual, uh, your spirit, and in your spirit you have a soul. Mm -hmm. Now, if I define for you what the soul is, which is where the mind is, and I begin to show you where that problems came from. Because, you know, all the problems we face in alternative consciousness, we believe that they, gener they generated or they, they started from the fall of man. Mm. You see? Because God created man from a light matter. A light matter means he was created without any negative energy. Mm -hmm. But when the fall came, that light matter was joined with dark matter. And that dark matter made man begin to partake of the fruit they call the tree of the good and evil. And that is where the problems of men began. Because you have a duality that is, number one, informed by light, but again, contaminated by darkness. So all the problems of humanity, when you're dealing with alternative mind therapy, we begin to tell you that in your original creation, how God created you, your original existence, you were created to perform and to function in perfection. God never created you to walk in worry. God never created you to walk in fear or guilt or condemnation or discouragement or despair or the things that trouble humanity. That was not the original plan. Mm -hmm. But when dark matter joined light matter uh, through the fall of men, men began now to operate within this duality that is called both good and evil, you know? So we, we teach, and I teach in alternative uh, mind therapy, that you need to come from what is called an altered state of consciousness. And an altered state of consciousness means mm -hmm. you, have, you are operating outside the, 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 the plan that God created you to operate in. Like I've told you, God never anticipated you to walk in fear or to operate in fear. And yet we know that fear is a thought. Yeah. And fear rules the, people of peop the, the lives of people. Mm -hmm. I would tell you also that uh, God never operated and wanted you to operate in anxiety. But people live in anxiety all through their life. Mm -hmm. But in alternative mind therapy, I teach you how to walk away from fear, how to walk away anxiety. from anxiety, how to walk away from discouragement. And the these are real issues, yes. Okay. Personally, I have walked in that life. I do not have fear. I have no anxiety. I have never woken up discouraged. Wow. You so can walk away from that, by the way. Nothing troubles you. Like, no. you've never really yes. had anxiety. Yes. When you're going, you know. Never. You do not panic never. at all. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> really? Life is natural for me, by the way. Wow. And it's a consciousness. You know, that's why I'm telling you, life revolves around consciousness. Mm -hmm. If you're able to step into this consciousness that is called Christ consciousness, okay. that teaches you that your original identity was perfection mm -hmm. until dark matter joined with, your, uh, with the light matter that was created in you. And that is why Jesus Christ came. You begin to awaken like a flower, mm -hmm. you see, to your original reality of who you're supposed to be. Okay. And that's how I overcame fear, anxiety. I don't wake up discouraged. I, I lost contact with all those things. And by the way, it's My a true reality, yes. My goodness, uh, yes. how I would love to be at that stage. Yes, so yes. Let, let me take us now from the genesis of it. Yes. You you mentioned for people that you know do not believe this, or have never heard of yes. uh, you know the three states: uh, mind, yes. soul, and spirit. Yes. Right. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that now, and then you get to the consciousness. Okay. Now the, you know the very well that uh, the way God created man is it is in three versions. Man is a well, man has a body. Man also is a spirit. And man also has a soul. So we say this. This is how we define it. Mm -hmm. Man is quintessentially a spirit or foundationally a spirit because God is a spirit. Because God said, let us create man now in our image. image, in our own likeness. Mm -hmm. And God is not physical. That's why not God is not fat. God is not thin. God is not black. God is not white. God is not tall. God is not green. None of those right. things. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. So quintessentially, a man was created a spirit. But God also gave you a soul to function. And soul gives you personality. You are the personality that the soul gives you. Mm -hmm. Because the soul is where the mind is. The soul is where the emotions are. The soul is where the will is. You see? Mm -hmm. And that's why soul reformation is important. Number three, there is now the body. Mm -hmm. And a body, we say, a body is a vibration of the frequencies that are operating between your soul and the spirit. So that whenever I see you in a certain vibration in your body, I can tell very, very well what you're thinking in your mind. And that is the beauty of it. You can change frequencies as you will, like you're changing <laughs> frequencies today. You can. You can actually wake up low. In 15 minutes, you're, you're on high, high spirit. Yes. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. That's the beauty of this reality. Okay. So when you understand the genesis of who you are mm -hmm. as a spirit, quintessentially or foundationally, then you have a soul which has a mind, which has a will. the will mm -hmm. and the emotions, and then the body is a vibration of those two. You can begin to understand how now to awaken yourself. Okay, tell yeah. us now, how yeah. do you awaken yourself? Now, the journey of awakening, first and foremost, it needs to understand. There is a place of truth. You see, you cannot just awaken from anything because we believe, and I told you, that life is based on consciousness. Everything in life is thought. Mm -hmm. Everything in life is thought. You know, there's one prophet in the Bible I love so much called Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And after God had called him and anointed him and declared a mandate for his life mm -hmm. and told him, I want you to go uproot, overthrow, overcome, and then you build and you plant. That was the mandate. Then after that, shortly before he started doing his ministry, God brought a vision to him. In verse, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, there about you'll see that story. Mm -hmm. Then this vision, the God that has anointed you, the God that has called you a prophet, the God that knows he has opened your eyes, brings towards uh, a vision for you. And he asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what can you see? You see? And what was God testing? God wanted to understand whether this man has really configured, understood mm -hmm. what his mind was. So Jeremiah said, I can see the vision of the almond tree. Do you know what God told him? Mm. He told him, you have seen well. You have seen well. I therefore will uh, hasten to perform my word. Okay. The problem we have in life is speaking consciousness. And you cannot be able to change your vibration until you're able to pick your consciousness. I can ask you today, mm -hmm. what are you seeing in your life? Wow. What are you seeing in your <laughs> life? What, what is the consciousness? Mm -hmm. So the first place to change your consciousness is a place called the truth. Choosing your consciousness. There are many consciousness, but there is, there is Hindu consciousness, there is okay. Islamic consciousness, uh -huh. there is ontology, there is Mormonism. There is a lot of consciousness. So you, you but me, I you chose yes, the consciousness, consciousness of Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh -huh. So the journey to awakening starts with picking a consciousness, uh -huh. and you need to understand the the, the 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 consciousness. For example, why I chose the consciousness that is called Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter fourteen, verse six, "I am the way, the truth, truth and the, and the life." life. Uh -huh. You see. So, so, and then he says, you shall know the truth. In John chapter 8, verse 32, he says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Okay. Now, truth is not a study. Truth is a person called Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He is the immortal and celestial light that God gave to humanity to awaken them. So, I choose Jesus because he says, I am the light. And you know, he, he's very specific. When he says, I am the light, the is a definite article. Mm -hmm. He's telling you there is no other light. It's just this me. is a light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I chose that consciousness and I started to engage. I started to interact. I started to open myself to it. And lo and behold, it was a river that was so, so, so beautiful for me. Okay. You see, and that's how you start your journey of awakening. You must choose so your you consciousness. Have, okay, you, cho yeah. you choose your consciousness yes. first. Yes. Now you chose Jesus. Yes. And then now, after that, what happens? You begin to interact with that truth. Number mm -hmm. two, let me tell you, <coughs> I tell these people, I tell people many times, one of the foundational uh, uh, things that we have never been told, and which is very important, which happens in the natural but never happens in the spirit when we grow up. Like, for example, when you are, when you are born, somebody took care of you. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, matters of consciousness are a bit complex because when I talk about the consciousness of Jesus Christ, I will delve into many, many things, you see? So what you need, number two, after identifying mm -hmm. a consciousness, yeah. you need a mentor, a spiritual teacher who can teach you, who can show you how to engage in that truth, you see? Because right now, you know, let me ask you something. Everybody in Kenya knows there's so many churches. I hear in Kenya there are, ah, I mean, they are, <laughs> no, it's like so business many. and yeah, from many where. Every, every other uh, day yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, church. Yes, and also. yet... There are people who are mentioning the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. but they are pushing people into darkness, isn't true, it? Yeah, true. there are people who are mentioning the name of Jesus, but what they are selling to people is fear, is worry, is anxiety, is poverty. I mean, is bondage, is mm -hmm. captivity, is slavery. Uh -huh, and yet they are mentioning the same, same Jesus, you see? So what will distinguish you from this person that is being taken care of to buying keys or to buying brooms or to buying uh, all these nonsense shenanigans that is happening on to, to a life of a consciousness where you are consciously aware mm -hmm. of the freedom and the liberty that is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who is this person that is going to guide you in that trip? That is where we come in, a spiritual guide, a spiritual mentor, somebody who can teach you on this consciousness, mm -hmm. you see? And that is why I'm forming, a, I'm telling you, I'm building a curriculum for this. Okay. So that when I, I give you that book, when I give you that uh, whole manual, you can interact with my thoughts in the book and know how to navigate through till the end. Okay. 
Yeah. You see, so you need to pick that consciousness. And number two, have a man, a mentee, a mentor who can be able to guide, guide you through you that through way. It. Yeah. Yeah, right. that, that, that is how it happens. That's pretty much it. Yes, okay. yes. Plus, there are many other tools that God has given us. Uh -huh. Yeah, but all of them, by the way, all the tools that God has given you, mm -hmm. it will also depend that, it will also require for somebody to help you for a few times. Okay. Like, for example, there's a powerful tool that God gave us, which is called the Holy Spirit. Mm. And the Holy Spirit is, uh, the Bible says he reveals the truth. And he's given to us as a gift by God. Yeah. Was given to us to reveal and to make us know all the truth. Yeah. But again, you know, if, if until you are taught on the on the on the dimensions of the spirit, it's very easy for you to get lost in between there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need a spiritual teacher to okay. guide you there, a mentor. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's why I'm building this thing for that for that particular for purpose. That purpose. Yes. All right. Uh, before before the interview off yes. the off air, yes, you had mentioned that there's a disconnect. Yes. Between now, you know, when you you go to people go to church every yes. other Sunday. Yes. People even stay in church the whole yes. week you yes. know, for, for others. But there's no manifestation yes, in yes, life. Yes. Yet, you know, the Bible has promises, yes, yes, but yes. it's not manifesting. Yes. So where's the disconnect? Let me tell you something. And this I find this very interesting, by the way. Uh, you know why science beats uh, church? Do you know why science is more appealing than, than the church, yeah. than the Bible? Because mm -hmm. science is empirical. You know, when we say empirical, we say one plus one is equal to two. two. Whether you're in America, <laughs> in Jamaica, in, in, in wherever you are, mm -hmm. in Afghanistan, if you do one plus one is two, if we took a scientific formula and put it on work, it will function the same way wherever. Mm. You see? But when you come into the matters of the spirit, there's a lot of inconsistencies. You can hear a word, somebody will hear a word, and both of you will have different results or never have those results. Mm -hmm. So I looked at that uh, inconsistency and I began to ask myself, what is the inconsistency here? Why is it that the word of God is true the way it is proclaimed? Why it is, is it that uh, people believe in God and love God and follow God? But why is it that somebody can be following God for 50 years, 30 years, believing living. one word, and they have never seen that word? Mm -hmm. I began to see the inconsistency. The inconsistency was in how the consciousness is formed in them. Mm -hmm. You see, there is, I don't know whether we have time, but there is one danger that has kept men in captivity for as long. And that is a thing that brings all these inconsistencies. It is called the law. The law. The law. The law. The way mm -hmm. we were. You know, let me tell you something. However, when we were born, from the time you were born mm -hmm. to the to the where you to where you are, you've been hearing information. There has been sound coming into your life. Now that information has formed part of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. You see? Because we are schooled and socialized in the law. Do not touch, do not go, do not sit there, do not be amongst those people, do not involve yourself with that. Don't, 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 don't. You see? Yeah. So that becomes part of your paradigm. And a paradigm means a way of living. Mm -hmm. It becomes your way of life. Now, that becoming the way of life, it forms in your subconsciousness that life is supposed to be lived like that. So if you found a problem, or we are in a place, and all of us found a problem, we are about five, and then we encounter a problem. Do you know because of our socialization and schooling, we will behave in the same one, the same manner, in the same way? Why? Because uh -huh. we were brought into a school, into a, school <laughs> into a way of thinking by the law that shows us that you, if you want to get out of this problem, you have to follow this particular path. Yeah. You see? But now that is where the problem is. Because when God created you, and that is why Jesus Christ came, he never wanted you to function in the law. Okay. So many people have these inconsistencies because they believe there is something they can do. They believe there is something inside themselves that they can be able to do to alter the causes of their life, which there is nothing. A con there's nothing you can do for a consciousness. All you need to do in a consciousness is to believe it, to understand it, and to flow in it. Okay. You see? But many people are still stuck in what they were taught in class too. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you today a very simple question. <laughs> if today you are told that you're going to fly to the U.S. Uh -huh. tomorrow morning, <laughs> what will you do? Uh, if I'm told I'm going to fly tomorrow morning Yes. the U.S. Yes. As, as where you are, and just be honest, <laughs> where, where you are right now, what would you do? I'm sure it would be on Maybe. IG. I'm oh, sure. Of course, I'd call <laughs> yes. everyone. I'm sure you, we, we will find you in town looking for the best dress, the best shoe. I mean, but telling. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah. But do you know there are people, if you tell them they're going to the US tomorrow, uh, the, uh, the flight is going to be at uh, maybe nine, they will be waking up at seven. It's not a bother, but for you, you prepare for a whole week. Yeah. What is the difference? And you're going to the same destination. Mm -hmm. It's consciousness. To you, you're excited. Every, it is a new experience. <laughs> you have never had it. Mm -hmm. But there's somebody who have had it until, what is this thing? Kawaida. Yes. Right. It's consciousness. Mm -hmm. Even in life, they are, like when I'm telling people, ask yourself, why is it that you're afraid? What makes you afraid? Why are you afraid? 
because it's you know you know you are afraid because uh. yes you are afraid because you have been taught things that tell you once you get to this place and there is no answer to this thing this is the end of you yeah and yeah. that is what i call in deeper terms when i'm teaching about these things it is called a dominant cosmos narrative a dominant cosmos narrative means the thought the mind that is ruling the lives of people consistently mm -hmm. as in if you wake up in the morning that thought will control how you think that thought will control your decision that thought will control everything that you do mm -hmm. it's called a dominant cosmos narrative okay. you see and that is what is ruling people and mm -hmm. it is called the law but when i teach you to operate outside the cosmos a dominant cosmos narrative then you begin to enjoy the freedom that comes to know that you can you can enjoy the breathe the, 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 the air that god has given you the joy of God will be upon your life. And yeah. it is for me, it's very fascinating, by the way. Now, I'm very curious. Yes. How do you then break away from, from the law, what we have been programmed since we were children? Yes. You know, because we are believers. I'm a believer in yes. God. Yes. But, you know, the, the instances where you get fearful, mm -hmm. the instances where I get mm -hmm. anxiety. Yes. You know. So how do I then break from that law? Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of something called awakening? Mm -hmm. awakening yeah many people are talking about awakening and as i'm telling you there are many consciousnesses mm -hmm. but let me tell you for you to begin to break from the law you need to begin to experience what is called awakening you know what is an awakening mm -hmm. an awakening is an encounter of a higher consciousness you begin to understand yourself and being defined yourself differently from how you have been defined before mm -hmm. so it is something you also need to hear like for example i'm telling you right now mm -hmm. if i told you that in the mind of god according to god there is nothing like problems in you. There is nothing like difficult. There's nothing like joblessness. There's nothing like pain. There's, if I begin to tell you like this and prove it to you, something in your spirit will begin to give in. Because all these things that you have known, which I am calling the altered states of consciousness, mm -hmm. like fear, like doubt, like unbelief, like what we call guilt, which people are suffering from, yeah. and condemnation, and by the way, all the people that are suffering from condemnation and guilt, mm -hmm. that is something you can walk away. You are fighting a battle that has already been won, yet it is not your battle. Walk away from that battle. Okay. God never mentioned or wanted you to live in that state. You know. Mm -hmm. So for you, what you need to do is to begin to embrace this new newness. Mm -hmm. That's only you can do with the law. Okay. You know. You know. For Paul, let me tell you yeah. something about. You know, Paul, Apostle Paul. You told yeah. me you're a believer. Mm -hmm. Do you know Apostle Paul was so much in the law? He became a professor in the law. Yeah, he was <laughs> a teacher of the law. Yeah. Yes, he knew if he was persecuting people, killing people with a zeal, knowing that he's pleasing God because of the law. Of the law. Mm -hmm. You see? But what happened to him when he met Jesus? What happened to him? He became free. He, he became, became blind first, and then he was opened his eyes, mm -hmm. and then he started interacting with the consciousness of Jesus Christ. He became a totally freed man. Now, that, that encounter Paul had with Jesus Christ is what I call okay. uh, awakening. Some people call it epiphany. Mm -hmm. uh, psychologists call it cognitive dissonance moments. Mm -hmm. You know, a cognitive dissonance moment is you are walking in a journey to a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Then you encounter a truth that makes you to turn 180 degrees towards another direction. Okay. So that is what you require. You need a point of contact where you begin to look at the weight, the burden, the tiresomeness of the law and begin to look at the freedom that is promised by Jesus Christ through his consciousness mm -hmm. and begin to understand you are formed after Jesus. So why would you be dealing with the law? Okay. Yeah. So it's just a belief. It is a belief, yes. And it is so pumped in you. Mm -hmm. It has formed your consciousness. It becomes a reality. Yes. Like, for example, when you're dealing with somebody who has rejection, what is rejection? Why are you denying yourself? Why are you rejecting yourself? Okay. Why? So people usually say uh, uh, the spirit of rejection mm. is following me, you know, so yeah, you can call it demon, you can call it ancestors, you can call it anything, <laughs> but let me tell you, <laughs> the, the, the thing can be, it is you that is self-rejecting yourself because of the law. Okay. Let me tell you, you grew up being told you can't do. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this statement that has been going on, uh, <laughs> those were the things that people <laughs> have been told. You can't be anything, you cannot become anything. Mm -hmm. So you are pumped being shown that uh, you are small, you are limited, you cannot be. Mm -hmm. But God in his original creation, do you know, let me say this. I'm going to say this on air because this is a discussion we are having. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people this is the beginning of trying to think higher than yourself. Mm -hmm. When we came here on this earth, biology teacher, 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 teac
who are trying to compete to enter this realm. True or false? Mm -hmm. That's biology. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, sure. So let me ask you, <laughs> what did you do for you to succeed, to defeat the others? Did you even know yourself? No. Did you know that you existed? <laughs> Of course. So how did you defeat millions of others for you to enter this planet? Hmm. Somebody guided you here. All right. And he guided you because he wanted you to live a certain way. Mm -hmm. And he knew you before you arrived here. That's why he gave you all the favors, opened all the gates for you to arrive before everybody. Mm -hmm. You get? So once you begin to understand that you are a divine plan, you are a product of a divine orchestration, you are coming from a higher order, mm -hmm. and you are not supposed to be here controlled by the environment, by philosophy, traditions, cultures of men. And you're only supposed to be defined by the philosophy of Christ, which gives you liberty and truth. And it is not joined in that matter. Mm. Ah, things will change for you. Wow. It will change for you. <laughs> and that is how me, I started looking at it. Mm. But there, there are many people in church today. They confess faith, but they are full of fear. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. It, but they are full of fear like this. Okay. Yes. All and right. you know, consciousness, you can't fake consciousness. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And that is just the soul. <laughs> I've not even started talking about spiritual realities. You oh know. my goodness. Yes. And we're about uh, to <laughs> Maybe you can mention a little mm. bit about spiritual realities. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So let me say this briefly because I know time is not our yes, side. Yes, we only have like three yeah. minutes. Yes. Let me say this. Spiritual realities, mm -hmm. like I've told you, uh, I d I'll deal with what is called nefesh ruach. Mm -hmm. Nefesh talking about the soul. And soul. Uh, uh, the, 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 the ruach meaning the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, it is very complex that people have never known that God created us as a number one spirit and, and also physical body. So to mean that in this physical body that you have, that you carry, mm -hmm. juxtaposed to it, there's another spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And we begin to understand this from Paul's writings. You know, Paul was a deep philosophical writer. And if there's a man that has inspired me and I read his accounts more than anything is Paul. Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 44, you go there about. He starts talking about saying that uh, there's a physical body, there's a spiritual body. You see? Now, all this time we've, we've been living by the body. But now he started telling us, we, you're not only a body in this body. There's also another spiritual body. And that spiritual body is juxtaposed completely like your physical body. Everything. It has a mind, it has eyes, it has hands, it has legs. It is inside you. It is part of you. And you don't know. You okay. get? Mm -hmm. So in spiritual realities, when I speak about spiritual realities, I teach people that man is a physical body also, in the sense that you were created by God to operate in this earth, in this planet. Mm -hmm. It is called the relevant world. Mm -hmm. And he gave you five senses to operate in this relevant world. He gave you the, mi the, the, the desires, or he gave you taste. You know those five yeah, senses yeah, yeah. to operate That's in this mm -hmm. physical world. But there's also another spiritual body that you have, which is you, mm -hmm. that does not live in this physical body. Okay. I mean, that does not live in this physical realm. Mm -hmm. It lives in a dimension called the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. I know you've heard about it. Yeah. The spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So your spirit is inside of you, but not, does not live in this physical realm. It lives in a dimension called the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching spiritual realities, I ask you, do you know of your spirit? Do you know how it is existing? Mm -hmm. Do you know the nature of its existence right now? And how it is existing. Because you see, yeah. you only know your physical body. Do yeah, you know how your spiritual body? <laughs> yes. You, <laughs> you can be here. Yeah. And that's why I'm telling you, when I talk about spiritual realities, there are people you will find that uh, they can be looking beautiful and free like you're looking. Mm -hmm. But if you look at them in the spirit world, mm -hmm. you'll find that these people are in total captivity, total darkness. And, and you Yes, and you don't know. Oh, all right. Yeah, but because you're enjoying the natural light, you think all is fine. Okay. You get. Mm -hmm. It's like one time God can give you an encounter, you get into town. And you find everybody is walking head down and you're walking head up. <laughs> spiritual realities. Spiritual. There's a lot of injustices in the realm of the spirit world because mm -hmm. you do not know yourself. There's a lot of controversy that can happen for you in the spiritual world because you do not know yourself. Mm -hmm. So I teach a lot for people to understand how do you exist as a spiritual entity mm -hmm. in the spirit world. Okay. You see? So that you can be a complete person. But then most of the problem that people find is based on the spiritual world. Yeah, Not so many sicknesses, physical. so many so diseases. So people say that things usually happen in the spirit before they manifest yes. in the flesh. Yes, it is true. Okay. Mm, very yeah. true. Anyway, the mm. conversation is long. We yeah. needed more time yes, for this. Yes, Maybe yes, yes. We'll You'll continue. call me sometime. <laughs> we'll continue with it next <laughs> oh, time. Yes, we? yes. I would like to talk about spiritual realities. Uh -huh. It's a very, very deep subject. And I feel like mm. in this generation, we especially for the young people, because mm -hmm. my heart is so much for the young people, yeah. I would really want them to understand mm -hmm. what is inside themselves so that when a young man is getting to about 35, he is a complex creation that is causing great, great uh, 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 impact mm -hmm. in the world. 
but you have just been taught on the soul mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah so maybe next time you'll invite me all right we yeah. we, sh we definitely will thank yeah. you very much yes. uh apostle anthony uh Mwangi. yes anthony uh, Mwangi. Yes, yes, Anthony Kureru Mwangi, who yes. is the CEO of Nefesh Watch. Yes. And uh, uh, also a spiritual realities teacher and yes. an alternative mind therapist. Yes. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. You can, uh, you can you give them the, my contact? Is it possible? Oh, yes. Yes. You can give okay. contact. This is your Okay, camera. okay. Thank you so much for being with me today and uh, being with us this morning and that for that uh, talk that we have had. If you'd like to contact me, my name is Apostle Anthony Kureru Mwangi. My number is 0724-571484 or 0736-750-638. Thank you so much and God bless you. All right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. So that's where we bring it to a close. Yes. Thank you very much Thank for you. sticking with us throughout the show from yes. morning yes. Uh, with me and Brian Sacco all the way till 10 a.m. We appreciate your company. This has been Why in the Morning. My name is Stephanie Yeta. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs>